so in that last game not a back if he wins it goes into the armageddon in just a few moments we will have the first move it's really cool to see the players in such a good move right before the start of a critical game yeah maybe you tried to get some inspiration from mittens there wesley so uh from the mittens uh kind of toy but uh, mittens plushy. i think it was a mittens plushy. i was gonna say plushy, but i've never literally never said that word before in my life oh. so i don't think one the first time to be on there natural thank you robert <laughs> uh, and, uh, and you can get your mittens plushy, but for now let's get into the chess as we've got one four on the board on d4 on the board and will we see a repeat of a game from earlier today wesley so mixes it up he pushes a pawn to a6 earlier two games ago we saw him put a pawn on e6 and despite winning that battle that game uh, Wesley So is the first to surprise his opponent. Why takes some space? And if I'm not mistaken, this is called a chameleon variation because you're not exactly uh, making it known what your plans are. Gonakovsky has played this from the black side for many, many years with great success. It's a situation where white expands on the queen side. You see the pawn c5, carve out some good dark squares on that side of the board, but black will eventually try to strike back either in the center with an e5 push. You want to break down a pawn chain. You don't want to allow someone to have a connect four uh, without fighting back. So I think that Wesley can strike with b6 or with e5, depending on the moment. He understands the nature of these positions. Yeah, things are getting hot out there in Toronto, especially hot right now for Abdus Satorov and Caruana. And uh, is it getting warmer? I see two red rings there on the uh, air things devices, the air quality. Uh, getting uh, really dramatic for the players. Meanwhile, on the board, Wesley, he's well prepared. He's fast. He's furious. He's uh, probably furious about that last game, that defeat. And he's now hunting down White's dark squared bishop. The bishop on f4 will be traded off within the next few moves. And to me, it looks like opening success. Wesley, so. Uh, for Wesley, he does get that bishop pair early on. If White was to move it to that square one step towards the right, Will we see a kingside expansion by Wesley in that case, putting that rook pawn e6, g5 in early on? We definitely will, because in a closed position, it's not the worst thing in the world to advance pawns where your king may eventually end up. Uh, the king still is in the center thus far, so it's not like you are forced to castle uh, to the king side. But for Nordirba, he actually doesn't mind if that knight captures his bishop, because white will have a true clamp in the center. One of the pawn breaks I mentioned was e7, e5. If there's a pawn f4 and d4, good luck to you. You're not breaking through there. It's going to be a strategic battle in the opening in this one, uh, while not affecting... seconds tick 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 he just doesn't have time and you see the evil bar all the way up now 
Wow, Abdus Atorov's position is collapsing in front of our very eyes. Simply the White King on the right board there is going to come under heavy fire. Wesley, so quick, so confident, retreats Black's Knight. Two monster threats. Firstly, to eliminate White's Bishop in the center of the board. Secondly, to attack White's H pawn. Nodebek is not long for this world. His dark squares are falling apart. Wesley playing aggressively, but also keeping all the strategic points under control in this position. Nodebek in big trouble on the position with a big threat of losing that H4 pawn. Also down on the clock. Uh, and for Wesley with black, he has made it look easy in this game so far. Never in trouble out of the opening. Nodebek did not even manage to get that A pawn off the board, creating a potential threat on the queen side while all hell breaks loose on the other side of the board. It looks terrible for Nodirbeck and he knows it. And it's uh, sort of the opposite of game three, where Nodirbeck, he was just waiting and Wesley was playing this very ambitious, provocative chess that completely backfired. Here, Nodirbeck had no choice. He needs a win in this game. He couldn't just play quietly, make a draw, and say that's okay. He needs to win to take the set, head to the finals. But it looks like Wesley So is about to take this one, and that means we'll have a reset, a third set for all the marbles to get to the finals. We'll talk more about the format of the third set later. Right now, Wesley needs to finish the job that he started and is well on his way. So we see a trade on F4, which opens up the E line for counterplay. But is counterplay going to happen with the H pawn falling and not just the H pawn falling, the G pawn potentially moving forward and checkmating ideas on Nodebeck's king? Yeah, White's king is doomed. It's as simple as that. He's trying to create some escape squares here. Nodebeck, Abdu Satorov. White's king will try to run for the hills, but unlike Wesley So's king in the previous game, it's not going to get very far. And uh, I think we'll shortly see a checkmating pattern occur on that board. But uh, yeah, Wesley So has done everything right. We're guaranteed more chess, no matter what the result in that match, at least. What's funny about the position on the right side, he does bring his knight in. I was going to say, he's up a pawn, so even if he doesn't deliver a checkmate, he can just plant a knight into the e4 square clog up that lane and if that knight's ever captured on e4 because checkmates will be threatened the rook on f8 suddenly stares into the white position it looks really really bad on the right hand side for near back up to star but the left hand side magnus carlson's frozen he's under three minutes on the clock because that queen on b3 that left hand side queen it's going to slide on over the same line as the enemy king and that's going to spell some serious danger for magnus and that's not the only thing he needs to worry about. That pawn on a5 can become a big thorn in Magnus's position. If he allows Fabi to capture on b5, suddenly Fabi will have an a5 pass. And we've got a result coming in. Wow. Wesley, so it looked like they spoke to each other. It was a draw. Wesley offers a draw in a totally winning position because that secures him this set of the match. And Wesley gets it done. There was no hope in Nodebeck's position. He accepts the draw with this G-pawn moving.